Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Han. I'm um, going to start this off with a bit of a story time. This is going to seem a bit random, but I promise it ties in at the end. Uh, this picture, about six years ago, my last deployment to Afghanistan, randomly came across the other guy you see in that picture, an old high school lacrosse buddy of mine um, at this very random remote combat outpost that I just happened to be at. He was a platoon leader for an EOD platoon out there doing route clearance ops, um, led about 12 EOD technicians. Pretty dangerous stuff, not quite as um, dramatic as the Hurt Locker, but still pretty, pretty dangerous stuff. So. We get to talking, he brings me into their little talk or tactical operations center, and I say, where are your, where are your intel analysts? He kind of laughed at me. I said, well, I don't have any intel analysts. I'm like, well, you have the, all the right networks, all the right accesses. Do you guys do your own intel analysis to help you with your mission planning? He said, no, we use this stuff for email. I'm like, oh, okay, well, let me, let me show you a couple things. But that interaction really kind of jump-started this innovation kick that, uh, that I began many years ago after I uh, joined the Space Force and stopped going overseas and doing nerd stuff for cool guys. So first project that I kicked off was this very rudimentary chat bot uh, that was built on top of our already existing chat infrastructure for the intelligence community and the Defense Department. Built it myself, so it was not very uh, robust, but um, people seemed to like it. It was essentially an Amazon Alexa text-based Amazon Alexa for commonly asked questions that could be answered with intelligence data. That program actually successfully transitioned to a larger program office into full-scale production. Cool, awesome. But I had kind of got bitten by the bug of being a product owner, developing, innovating, and as soon as that thing transitioned, I was a product owner without a product, a man without a mission. So I needed to figure out the next thing that I was going to do. Right around the time ChatGPT came out, I ended up drafting a white paper on the top three use cases that I think the IC and DOD both should and could uh, apply this technology towards presented that, that white paper to my commander and government civilian leadership. My commander, brilliant guy, he says to me, dude, great, go forth, do great things. I told him, ah, this is a bit, a bit complex, a bit above my pay grade. And I'll never forget, it's been a motto that I lived by since that day. He said, well, it's a good thing you don't do this for the damn money. And I said, yeah. You're right, they don't pay me very much to do this. Um, and so Guru was born. Uh, I begged, borrowed, and tactically acquired uh, funds, resources, buy-in. Um, I may not be the best program manager, but I, I am, if nothing else, persistent. Um, and we've been working on Guru since, for about a year and a half now. Uh, currently deployed to about 250 users um, across the world, across agencies, and people are really liking it. So the three core tenets of Guru that we have kind of baked into our development process, number one, it has to be usable and useful across the entire spectrum of intelligence analysis, whether you are the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff sitting at the Pentagon, or an intelligence analyst sitting at 
NSA, CIA, some other national intelligence agency doing kind of in-depth subject matter expert work. Or you're my buddy doing route clearance ops, writing his mission plan for the operation he's about to go on in the next hour or so. Number two, it had to be data source and data type agnostic. And the way we went about doing this was using C3's platform. And I'll get into a bit of the, the architecture, how that works. So user asks their question. Uh, they can select specific agents or specific data sources that they want to uh, have answered those questions, or they can just search everything. They submit their query. Each one of those agents produces a standalone response based on the data that it has access to and in turn the end user has access to. Those standalone responses are then fused into what we call our multi-source synthesizer. The multi-source synthesizer takes all of those and generates a coherent, complete, fused, and cited response. And by the way, we do this entirely without locally storing any data. We, Guru works with the data, where it is, when it needs it, and using the already existing security controls that the data providers already have in place, which is great because I don't understand security in the slightest. Uh, I don't want to set that up. So unfortunately, the networks that we work on, the space that we operate in, typically lags behind uh, what's available to everybody else commercially. Uh, not super substantially, but we do not have access to some of the latest and greatest foundation models, uh, compute infrastructure. So the third tenant for Guru is it has to be scalable and cost effective, cost efficient. We do that with Guru by adopting a sort of hybridized approach to our, our inference architecture. For the heavy lift, generation intensive reasoning tasks, we leverage the one, the one frontier foundation model that we have access to currently, that being Anthropic's Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. For the lower level, less intensive tasks, we use open source models like Mixtral 8x7b currently, um, although if anybody's seen uh, what DeepMind has put out recently with Gemma 27b, that's, uh, that's looking like the next contestant for this. And this has saved, this model has saved us a significant amount of money uh, in compute costs as well as um, just overall architecture footprint. So with that, I just want to, I have a lot, I've learned a lot over the past five, six years going from you know, tactical SIGINT analyst to uh, product owner, quasi developer, vibe coder, um, but I'll, I'll keep it to three. Number one, I needed this application 15 years ago when I joined the intelligence community. The demand signal could not be higher for something like this. Something like this is an inevitability in our space, the value proposition is just far too great. Number two, like a lot of you on the commercial side, I think, I'm not the first person to say this, but we do not have a lack of data problem. We have a problem extracting value out of the data that we do have. We've spent a ton of money and effort collecting more and more and more and more data but a lot of times that data is not discoverable. So why are we collecting it? Guru, I think, can solve that problem. We should, we could and we should put the onus of data discoverability on the data providers for integrate, to integrate into a system like Guru rather than have that onus put on the end users constantly 
having to stay up to date on what new data set might help out with their, their question or their mission use case. And three, this has to scale and it has to reach more users and it has to do it quick. Every piece of data that does not reach the warfighter when he needs it, if it could help him, in my opinion, is an unforgivable failure. And I think Guru can solve that. And in a near peer fight, that information dominance, that information advantage that something like Guru can provide to the warfighters, I mean, that, that is no kidding lives at stake, right? Um, if, if our people cannot get the, the data they need to make decisions fast, they lose. Speed to information equals speed to decision equals better outcomes from the Pentagon to the foxhole and everywhere in between. So before I, I leave, um, there's gonna be, you guys have a little bit of a treat. You'll have a, a quick preview at uh, what it might be, look like. Obviously, mock scenario, nothing in here is classified. Uh, what it might look like for a Southcom analyst doing his day-to-day -day with the help of Guru. Forewarning, you, this might be a little bit hard to follow if you're not in the space, and it is extremely dense, but I want you to keep one thing in mind. Imagine what this would look like without the assistance from something like Guru. You're looking at 10 to 20 disparate data sets, all with their own access controls, their own query languages. Just keep that in the back of your mind while you're watching this, and I think you will find it very compelling. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, C3, for having me, and thank you for the incredible work you guys continue to do. Six May, 2024, my first day on assignment at the DEA field office in Guayaquil, Ecuador. Chief didn't waste any time. She stood over my shoulder and said, find me some bad guys. I nodded and turned to C3AI's Intel Fusion. If the answers were buried in the data, this was the tool that could dig them out. Who are the transporters and front companies smuggling drugs through Ecuador based on reporting since 1 January 2024? Intel Fusion got to work, but unlike a basic search engine, it wasn't just fetching documents. It was orchestrating multi-source retrieval, analysis, and synthesis, ensuring no critical intelligence was overlooked. As results rolled in, a pattern emerged. Front companies, Equifruit International and Blue Wave Logistics. Aerial smuggling routes. A Cessna 177 Cardinal, call sign Foxtrot 9Y, flown by Alejandro Quintero, transporting illicit cargo from Colombia into Ecuador. The connections were there, but I needed proof. Show all flight activity into Ecuador for Colombian national Alejandro Quintero using call sign Foxtrot 9Y over the past three months. Intel Fusion scanned international aviation logs correlating flights with suspected narcotics trafficking patterns. Serialized reporting flagged Quintero's low altitude flights, missing flight plans, and evasive maneuvers between Colombia and Ecuador. Air tracking showed flight paths from Colombia into a remote area of Ecuador. Satellite imagery revealed jungle airstrips and multiple Cessnas, including what appeared to be a 177 Cardinal offloading shipments. This wasn't speculation. This was a logistics network in motion. Quintero was just the first link. Where did the drugs go next? Show all reporting on Blue Wave Logistics and Equifruit International since the beginning of January 2024. Intel Fusion synthesized intelligence across multiple sources. DEA investigations suggested that Equifruit has been trafficking cocaine hidden in banana shipments. Shipping Manifest 4824 listed Blue Wave Logistics as the consignee for a suspicious Equifruit shipment. Despite being flagged by Ecuadorian customs, the container was still loaded onto the Liberian-flagged cargo ship Silver Horizon, bound for Rotterdam. Intel Fusion allowed me to trace every piece of intelligence to ground truth, with citations to the original source data, such as shipping manifests and customs reports. I was watching it unfold in real time, but I needed something definitive. Show all maritime tracking of call sign Silver Horizon since 1 April 2024. AIS tracking confirmed Silver Horizon left Guayaquil on April 14th, 
transited Panama and headed into the Atlantic. But then something strange happened. It slowed and loitered near the Azores. Was this a delay or was it a mid-sea transfer? This was the moment of truth. Show all suspicious maritime activity within a 150 mile radius of the Azores over the past two weeks. Satellite images showed small vessels, likely fishing boats, as well as a container ship. AIS tracks revealed a second cargo vessel, the Black Eagle, rendezvousing with the Silver Horizon. Smaller vessels, possibly the fishing boats, shuttled cargo between them before parting ways. It was textbook smuggling. I had all the pieces, but time was against me. I needed to compile a report and get it into the right hands, fast. Produce a tactical intelligence report for all suspicious activity related to Equifruit International, Blue Wave Logistics, Black Eagle, and Silver Horizon from 1 January 2024 to 6 May 2024. Intel Fusion's AI agents retrieved data from disparate intelligence sources, analyzing vast data sets and extracting critical intelligence. Its multi-source synthesizer then fused the findings into a cohesive intelligence report. I quickly disseminated the report to DEA headquarters, Interpol, and U.S. and Italian naval forces. The response was swift. International forces launched Operation White Current on 7 May 2024. A DEA-led raid in Ecuador on 8 May seized 160 kilos of cocaine at a remote airstrip in Ecuador. Joint U.S. and Italian naval forces intercepted the Black Eagle off the Italian coast on 9 May. The boarding team found and seized 855 kilograms of cocaine hidden in banana containers. By June 10th, $28 million in cartel-linked assets were identified and frozen, spanning bank accounts, real estate, and shell corporations in Panama, Dubai, and Hong Kong. Intel Fusion didn't just retrieve information. It reasoned, connected the dots, and uncovered a vast criminal enterprise, enabling decisive action the cartel's network was fractured. Intel Fusion is the unclassified version of C3AI's Generative Unified Retrieval Utility, Guru, which is deployed to the US intelligence community where it is used by more than 19 intelligence organizations. It began with a single query, but this was just the beginning. Intel Fusion didn't just uncover one smuggling route, it exposed a global web of crime and corruption, and my mission is far from over.